Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at a little bit more walk snail gear which I'm very happy about. This was sent to me by Banggood for the review. This is the Avatar HD Kit V2. Kit meaning it has the video transmitter, the antenna and the camera all included. It's not the Pro camera, it's the V2 camera. Uh, I'll show a little bit of a comparison between the two a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to pair it up with my Goggles L. Walk Snail Goggles L, wonderful box goggles, uh, high definition, 1080p recording on board and in the goggles. So let's open it up and have a look. Here's the packet, Avatar HD Kit V2 Walk Snail. A big reveal. So we have a quick start guide that shows you the connections. Have a quick, closer look at that in a minute. I like the looks of the uh, walk snail gear, all sort of uh, black and arch looking. There's the video transmitter and the camera attached by the MIPI cable. Lens protector there, I'll pop that on so I don't stick my big mitts on it. Antenna with the little IPEX connector, left hand circular polarised. Various nuts and bolts and connector cables. We have a little USB connector there, that's for firmware updates because this one doesn't have an SD card slot in it, so we can't put the firmware on the SD card. Let's go through the USB connection. Also, onboard recordings, it does have 32 gig of internal storage, so we need to get that off somehow, so that'll be via the USB connection there. And there's the power and UART RX and TX connection. And I love the way that is connectorized. You just plug it in like that. So we have voltage, ground, RX and TX. You can run these video transmitters only with the power. You don't need a flight control board to get it out of low power mode, unlike the DJI 03 cameras, video transmitters. Uh, so, yeah, don't be afraid. If you don't know anything about INAV or RG Pilot or flight control board, you can just pop it on your plane, power it, and set up the power in the goggles, and you're good to go. Now, we have the connectorized connection as well as pads if you want to solder it on directly, and a little push button there for changing channel and binding. And on the other side there, that's where the little USB connector goes in. Had the little 20 by 20 mounting holes here that uh, the screw, the bolts will bolt into. I like these. You can bolt them in from underneath. And the MIPI cable goes in under here. You can change cameras by taking these off and uh, clicking the, uh, the camera cable in. Lots of cooling fins, but these things do get hot. You don't want to leave them sitting around powered up for long before you get out flying or you want to um, mount a, a cooling fan on top, which you can actually buy from Walk Snail as well. All right, so let's go and have a look at the website to check out the specs. Right, we're over on the Banggood website, US $135.99 at the moment. May change, of course, later on. 32 gigabytes onboard memory, no SD card slots. 22 milliseconds low latency, might be relevant to quad flyers, but not to fixed wing flyers. 1080p HD, 160 degree day vision camera with gyro flow for RC drones. So it does have gyros on board and it does record a motion file for use in gyro flow later on to stabilize the footage. Specification, so it is a native 4.3 aspect ratio high definition sensor, uh, but you can switch it to 16.9 if you want to, which is what I will do with the fixed wing. F2 large aperture, 32 gig built in, supports gyro flow, 1080p, 120 frames per second. GPS anti-jamming, I wonder if that makes the GPS uh, satellite acquisition easier. They're quoting four kilometer range, but of course that depends on conditions. Supply voltage 6 volts up to 25.2 volts. That's a good wide range, so you can run it from flight battery, separate battery, uh, flight control board, whatever you want. The camera is the Avatar V2 camera, as opposed to the Pro camera, which, which we'll compare later on. Here are the specs there. VTX is the Avatar V2 module. You can buy the module by itself and add whatever camera you want to it. It is the single antenna version. Natively supports Betaflight, INAV, FETEC and Argy Pilot on-screen displays, unlike 
DJI. Now there are two versions, the 8 gig internal memory and 32 gig. This is the 32 gig and I think the 32 gig is the only one that actually has the built-in gyro and produces the motion file for gyro flow. Dimensions and wiring diagram here. As I said, a 20 by 20 bolt pattern in the bottom and the top. 19 wide camera, so that'll fit most pre-made mounts. Uh, I've actually come up with a 3D printed one that I use on my little mount, which I'll, I will put a link to my 3D printed mount in the description, of course. Make sure you read the description always. And the wiring diagram here, as I said before, uh, power, ground, RX and TX, just for connecting to the flight control board. As I said, for beginners, you don't need a flight control board. You can just power it, 6 to, what is it, 25 volts or whatever, and uh, select manually select the power in the goggles, and then you, you're good to go. Now, I'll flick over to the Caddx website where you can get firmware and manuals. Uh, this is the support page on the Caddx website, the download center. And we look for the Walk Snail user manuals. Here we are here. So V2 kit quick start guide. This is the one you want. And there's the manual for the goggles as well. If you want to know more in-depth stuff, you can download the manual, flick through it, and it'll tell you more than I can tell you. Now comparing the V2 camera to the Pro camera, the V2 camera has a one on 3.2 inch, four megapixel, four three native sensor. The Pro has a one on one eighth inch. That's a bigger sensor. Sony Starvis 2 sensor. 16.9 or 4.3, so it's, maybe it's not native 4.3. Uh, eight megapixel lens. Same angle of view, uh, wider aperture and uh, more sensitive. So a better nighttime camera is the Pro. And there is there only the 32 gig version supports gyro flow. And we can have a quick look at the downloaded manual as well. More details, wiring diagram again, how to bind. Now linking the VTX to the goggles, you need to power them both up, push the bind buttons on both of them. Well, actually, I think push the bind button on the goggles first until you get the de 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 and blinking light. Then you push the button on the video transmitter and uh, when everything turns solid green, you're good to go. How to upgrade the firmware, very easy. I think it comes with four channels activated, uh, but if you put the two little FCC files on the, on the internal storage of the video transmitter, then it will open up the, all, the whole uh, eight channels. Uh, now the precautions before powering on, please install all antennas to avoid damage to the components. Always good advice. And when you've got standby mode activated, it will start up in 10 milliwatts and then you have to arm the board to increase it to the operating power. Uh, or you can take it out of standby mode manually if you don't have a flight control board. Okay, here we are. I have the camera mounted up on my Zod Altus. A uh, lovely day for a test flight. Uh, and we'll see how this lovely Walksnail HD V2 camera works. I have a rather aggressive magpie here who wants me to go away. Oh no, he's just having a... Oh, there's two of them now. All right, let's get it up in the air. Magpies are going to chase it. Oh, it's looking good. It's a beautiful day for it. Lovely blues and greens, which hopefully will show up in the camera recording. And the Zod Altus is flying beautifully. Oh yeah, delightful. Very sharp, nice colours at the moment. Being swooped by a magpie. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, we'll fly around a bit. Camera's working well. I really like this walk snail gear. Where are we? Out over there somewhere. Put me to return to home so I can check out where it is. It's 
Seltus is so quiet, I can't see it now. Well, we'll just fly. Magpies are leaving me at the moment. I'm not alone at the moment, so not too bad. But the view in the goggles is fantastic. Better than the DJI V1s. Much better. Better sharpness. Uh, I want cruise mode. There we go. Excellent. Just adjusting the goggles. They're a bit tight on my nose at the moment. My little homemade Head-in glasses aren't all that comfortable. I need to cut out a nose for my big snoz. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, super sharp. Great colours. Camera's pointing down a little bit. So that's why I'm getting the curved horizon there and a bit of the nose. Pointing into the sun. This is actually handling it better than the uh, the GT kit. I think that was, the GT kit, GT kit was uh, turning purple occasionally. Uh, but this is looking good. It's uh, kind of a difficult view looking straight into the sun and the reflections. Um, but it's doing a very good job. It's not underexposing, not making everything else go dark. It's just working very nicely. Yeah, so another good HD camera from Cadex Walk Snail. This is the GT V2. I'd like to try the Pro camera. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get one of them to play with. This is just the normal camera. Uh, and the pro camera is meant to be a bit better uh, but mm, doesn't need to be a lot better than this this is fantastic as I said better than the Cadex Fistas that I've been using and the DJI V1 goggles even though you do get a, a, a bigger view in the V1 goggles it's lower resolution and it, it really tell it really shows too in the recording and the and the view yeah, great stuff. All right. I love it. Oh, we'll bring it back in. The Altus is flying beautifully. I really like this one. And the Cadex camera, great view, absolutely beautiful view. It is a perfect day for it, I have to say, so everything's going in its favour at the moment. And we're down, excellent. That is a very nice camera, cheaper option than the GT kit or the Moonlight. Uh, it is very, very high quality. And married with the Zold Altus, it is a beautiful FPV experience. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. I'll just show you how I have it connected. I have this little connector here, which is a four pin DuPont. Uh, I can disconnect that. See, that's four pins and that's the, uh, the other side of it so that uh, it doesn't overheat the video transmitter while I'm waiting for satellites to be acquired. I have been getting quite a few questions lately about how do I stop things overheating um, and it just hasn't been a problem. Uh, that is warm but yeah, uh, 
no problem while it's flying. The problem is going to be while you're waiting for satellites to be acquired or while you're setting up and yeah I just power it down basically. Uh, it also probably helps acquire satellites too. Uh, it doesn't interfere with the, with the GPS sensor. So there you go. 